Hey everyone, and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today we are taking a look at the longer Ray 5 10 watt laser engraver. This inexpensive benchtop laser comes with a full color touchscreen, Wi Fi capabilities, and a load of safety features. But how well does it cut and engrave? Let's find out. Before we begin, this laser was provided for me to review by Longer. As with all of my reviews, they are not paying me for this review, they won't see this video before it is published, and these are my true opinions after using this laser for the last month. So let's get started. The Longer Ray 5 is a benchtop laser engraver which comes in three different powers, a 5 watt, 10 watt, and 20 watt version. Today I'm taking a look at the 10 watt version. The heart of the machine is the laser module, which consists of two laser diodes that are combined together to form the final 10 watt laser. The diodes are 450 nanometer wavelength, which is a visible blue light. The top of the laser module houses the electronics, then below is the cooling fan, which blows through the units. It cools the diodes as well as exits out the nozzle to blow away the smoke. The Ray 5 does not come standard with air assist, however Longer does sell air assist as an optional accessory. Moving down the laser module, we see the protection shield. It's adjustable using two screws on the sides. The shield does a good job of blocking the laser towards the front and sides of the machine, but the back is open. There is a nozzle covering most of the lens, but the open back does provide a large area which reflected laser light can shine out. A pair of blue light blocking goggles are included, so always wear eye protection. Longer advertises the laser focus point to be an ultra fine 0.06 by 0.06 millimeters. My kerf test showed a kerf offset of only 0.04 millimeters, which agrees with that ultra fine laser point. Good job, Longer. Focus adjustment is done by loosening the two screws attaching the laser module. Then a special 50mm tall focus cylinder is placed on the material you want to cut, and then the module slides down until the back of the laser module rests on the cylinder. I'm not a big fan of this method. It works, but it requires me to keep track of this aluminum cylinder, and they only provide one, so if you lose it, you'll have to make a replacement. The frame is made out of lightweight aluminum profiles, allowing for a total cut area of 400mm by 400mm. The X and Y axes are belt driven, riding on V-slot wheels on the frame. One thing to note here is that there are no end stops on the Ray 5, meaning there is no way to home the machine and then use absolute coordinates. This is the first laser I've reviewed which doesn't have any end stops, but once you get used to always using relative positioning, then it isn't a big deal. Towards the front of the machine is a 3.5 inch color touchscreen display. Here you can control the laser and select files to cut or engrave from the SD card. The screen is nice and responsive, and the menu items are clearly laid out. Very useful for offline engraving to be able to directly cut from the SD card without needing a computer attached. It can also connect to your Wi-Fi network, and you can remotely connect to it via its IP address in your browser. That web page gives you the ability to control the laser and even upload G-code files to the SD card and start the job over Wi-Fi. It is very easy to use. And with Wi-Fi, one computer can control multiple Ray 5 machines at the same time, if you need that kind of production. The longer Ray 5 has a number of safety features which are nice to see. It has bump protection, meaning if the laser is bumped or moved while it is running, it will immediately cut power to the laser. That's good protection for if it is accidentally pushed off the table while in operation. It also has flame detection, which will cut power and sound an alarm if it detects an open flame. Longer sells a handful of accessories for the Ray 5, including the air assist mentioned earlier, a rotary roller, honeycomb work tables, and even enclosures for ventilation. It's always good to see possible upgrade paths for the future. The longer Ray 5 is quiet in operation. The cooling fan is very quiet. You can still hear the stepper motor drivers, they aren't silent drivers, but they aren't uncomfortable to be around. It doesn't require hearing protection unlike some other lasers that I've tested. For software, Longer provides a free copy of Laser Gerbil and a trial version of Lightburn on the included SD card. While both programs work well, I would recommend investing in a Lightburn license as it is a fantastic piece of software. Both programs can connect to the Ray 5 via USB or save the G-code for offline engraving. Assembly was straightforward, with a printed quick start guide showing the steps. The x-axis and control board comes fully pre-assembled, with cable wraps and all. You will need to bolt the frame together, add the y-axis belts, plug in the motors, and attach the laser module. Overall, it was a quick assembly, taking about 40 minutes in total. There was some ambiguity in the pictures, as the pictures don't clearly show which frame rails go where, but they only assemble in one direction, so you'll eventually figure it out. I think most people would have little difficulty with this assembly. 
So let's take a look at how well the Ray 5 cuts and engraves. As always, be sure to know what materials can and cannot be safely cut with a laser, and never put unknown materials into the laser. First up, wood. The Ray 5 does a great job of cutting and engraving woods. I was consistently cutting 3mm plywood at 220mm a minute, a pretty middle of the pack speed with 10 watt lasers. I was really noticing the lack of air assist by standard though. The fan does a good job of clearing away the smoke, but the edges of the cut are darkened and deeper engravings have set around the edges. Even without the air assist though, I think it cut grates and it didn't experience any flare-ups. Diode lasers cannot cut clear acrylics, but the Ray 5 can handle opaque acrylics with no issues. It did take a couple of passes to cut through the quarter inch acrylic, but the results are very good. Leather also engraved well. I would have expected the lack of air assist to hurt leather engraving, but the default cooling fan did an excellent job of removing the soot. The edges are crisp with little discoloring. Slate is another victory for the Ray 5. The laser had no issues producing a consistent engraving across the surface. I just love the look of engraved slate. Finally, let's look at metals. Anodized aluminum works well. You'll want to bump up the speeds as much as you can, otherwise the thin metals tend to warp. But eventually, I found the right speeds to where I can get consistent engravings. Stainless steel also works well. Warping is a bigger issue here, as you have to go much slower to allow the oxides to form. I ended up taking two passes at a slightly faster speed to give the metal time to cool. This is another instance where air assist would have been helpful. With the examples out of the way, let's look at a couple of the issues I had during testing. First up, the framing feature when cutting from the SD cards didn't always work. If I had the G-code set up to start from the center, then the framing would only frame the top right quarter of the file. So when I started, the cut was off of the material. I had to change Lightburn to start at the lower left corner for the framing to work properly. I also had an issue with the flame detector. I was cutting outside in the morning, and when the sun shined onto the laser, it triggered the flame detector and stopped the cut. That is an issue I've seen with other lasers, and just the drawback of the type of sensor used. If you plan on using this in a location which receives direct sunlight, you may need to disconnect the sensor or put up some shading. In conclusion, the longer Ray 5 10 watt laser is a fantastic benchtop laser engraver. It cut and engraved very well for a 10 watt laser, although I would highly recommend adding in the air assist for even better cutting for woods. The safety features are great to see, and I love the flexibility of offline engraving with both the SD card and a Wi-Fi connection that doesn't require special software. The lack of end stops and thus the inability to use absolute coordinates is only an issue if you find yourself making custom alignment jigs often, but for most users you wouldn't miss them. The focus adjustment isn't my favorite, but it gets the job done, as long as you don't lose their focusing tool. Overall though, I think the Ray 5 is a fantastic engraver. The longer Ray 5 10 watt laser cutter sells for around 500 US dollars, sometimes pushing into the $400 range depending on sales. This is one of the less expensive 10 watt laser engravers that I've seen, and hopefully would give you room in the budget for their 90 US dollar air assist kits. If you are looking for a medium powered benchtop laser, then I would highly recommend this laser. So thank you all for watching my review of the longer Ray 5 10 watt laser engraver. You can find more information in the links in the video description. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. And if you are in the market for 10 watt lasers, why not check out my review of the Acer P10 or the Xtool D1 lasers, a couple of other options that might interest you. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.